Okay, so take two. First time ran was pretty shit, and hopefully this time we'll actually get something sort of productive. It's a little late, so I'm kind of rambling and slurring my words together. Coming across like a little bit of a moron, which isn't great. I'd rather avoid that if I can. So uh, I've taken some Red Bull, and uh, I might get really, really animated in like two minutes. So we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, so yeah, let's rock and roll. First up, we have... Let's, we'll have this one. Let's just start with this. So this is a D6. Popular design recently. Sold a few of these. Especially in this combo with the, the Asa Stonewash, the Black Micarta, and the Copper Hardware. And I actually figured out a new way of sharpening these, or polishing the tips in these, sorry. And it's a much nicer polish, and this thing is just screaming sharp. I don't feel like cutting my... There we go. There's some cord. Alright. So, yeah, we've got some of the, uh, the 80s paracord. Pops it no problem. See a nice sharp little knife. Nice and thin, so these are nice little slices behind the edge. I believe these start out about 8th inch and after surface grinding to be a little bit thinner than that, but still pretty decent. And this one damn near landed in the bin a couple of times just from me being stupid, I guess. The big issue was when I was doing the doing the handles, I was cutting down these screws. Uh, sorry, screws, bolts. And I kind of forgot my belt was two inches wide, so I took this big chunk out of this side here. And I to fix that, I kind of matched up on both sides. Luckily, I didn't go and hit the blade, because that would have been a disaster, but did work, did fix it. And I actually kind of like that little that ramp there. It helps it make a, uh, I don't know what you call it, a pinch grip up here. So I might actually include that in the future design. Cuts out a little bit of weight, not much. I doubt it's more than a gram, but it's a nice little feature. It doesn't affect your grip whatsoever. So yeah, I'm probably gonna add that in the future. This one's got a rock pattern on the handle. And it's kind of hard to see in the micata, but you can see it in the, the, the pins especially. And they've got this weird little texture to them, which was a total accident. And I'm not sure if I could repeat it again, but I do like it. And what I'm hoping is going to happen is, is that the, uh, the the low spots on this will actually go blue or patina nicely, and the top parts will stay shiny from wear to give it a really nice two-tone. But we'll see. I've only, I've only just made this knife like two days ago, so it hasn't had a chance to do cool shit yet. And this one's got a rock pattern on the spine and a... OD green cams my cutter bead that I just had lying around that I figured why not slap on there. So yeah, nice and thin. This is probably the thinnest one I've done. Just from some of the weird fixes I have to do to it. So yeah, if you if you live in a country which lets you neck carry a knife, this is gonna be nice. It's thin enough that it's probably not gonna print all that much under your shirt unless you're wearing a really thin shirt. But like under a jacket or something, this thing's gonna conceal nicely. But yeah, this one's got nice rock solid sheath. Ain't falling out, no rattle which is what you want for a neck knife. You want tighter, not looser. So this one works for or inside the waistband or as a neck knife. This one here is a little different. I just put a hole in there just to kind of take up that, that dead area right there. I guess you can use it to as another clamping point for a vest or something, but mainly just there to take out that big blank space. So yeah, that's that one. So next up is actually the whole reason I wash my hands for this video. And this is my hands that have been washed. I know it's it's hard to believe, but this is about as clean as they get. This job has really just ruined my chances of being a hand model. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that, that fuckery's aside, Kydex sheath again. And this one is going to leave all sorts of shit on the blade. Sorry, the handle. This is a very bright color, which isn't really good against dirt, but looks cool. So this is my first time working with yellow. Uh, this is a special request from the guy. He lives in either Germany or uh, Belgium. I know it's one of those two countries. I got to go check the uh, the order list. But he, he wanted a knife that was very unthreatening, and he picked yellow. And I think he's picked the right color. It's not a very threatening knife. I had a lot of trouble finding a really good yellow though. Uh, I did buy some stuff from a company that I'm not going to mention, and I bought this like single pair of handles, and it looked pretty shit. It was like this really pale yellow. It kind of 
It looked a little like this, but worse. This is just really pale stuff. It kind of looks like if you give like a kid jelly beans, like yellow jelly beans, and they throw it up somewhere. That's pretty much the color it was, so that was no good. That's lying somewhere. And I did find this stuff somewhere else. This is a... I did buy a whole sheet for it, but it's definitely a nice color. And with the popularity of yellow, I'm probably going to have that sheet till I die. So uh, it's an investment, let's just say. Uh, this one's rocking the... The dickhead screws. So these are 10 mil. And I typically try and talk people out of these because they're not really great screws. Very hard to install, not very user friendly, all sorts of issues with them. But they look cool. But again, not, not all that great from a user perspective. So yeah, nice little knife. Uh, he wants to use it for cooking and all that stuff. And for that, the cloak is a great choice because you've got that nice front area right here, which is almost like another blade. You've got pretty much a dragonfly like a, the Spartaco Dragon's Fly blade length right there. So for like a cutting on a cutting board, it's going to do a great job of it. So yeah, that's that one. Still needs a bit of a clean and a sharpen. I mean, this has got no edge on there, so I'll leave that tomorrow. Uh, next up, a knife you've already seen before. Well, I did a knife very similar to this like two weeks ago. And this is pretty much the uh, sort of repeat. It's a little different, but not much, so. Still waiting on the, the lanyard here, but besides that, it's done. Screaming sharp, belt finished satin bevels, and a camera that will not focus. I need to get a light box or something. I know a lot of you guys are saying you go manual mode, it's, it's not great. I tried a couple of times with manual mode, but I'm just constantly adjusting, it's, it's no good. So maybe a light box will fix my focusing issues, maybe. But we'll see. But yeah, it'd be good to get a light box anyway because the, the lighting in here is shit and good lighting makes things look a lot better. Which is why I usually wait for the daylight to do my Instagram photos. But yeah, nice shoulder sheath in this one as well. Just needs a lanyard so you can actually pull the damn thing out. And uh, last but definitely not least, we have a friction folder. And this friction folder is for a guy who was incredibly patient, just way too patient, and I decided to do some extra stuff for him. So originally this whole thing was just supposed to be stonewashed. But it would have looked pretty boring. So to make it more interesting, I added a two-tone bevel. Now the guy specifically requested O1 because he likes the, the patina that O1 gets. For those who don't know, high carbon steels, when you start cutting things like fruits, vegetables, or pretty much anything, it'll start developing this these different colors just from oxidization. Like if you look at the really old uh, slip joint knives out of 1095, they have this really cool color of patina on them. A lot of guys really like that. He uh, he asked for O1 so he can have that effect. Uh, I really wish I could actually get that on stainless steel, but uh haven't managed to figure something out that replicates that yet. Because if I could, I'd do it like every knife because it looks so damn cool. But yeah, so because uh, he wanted that, I actually did the belt finish satin. A, because it looks cool as a two-tone. And B, because the shiny blade is going to pick up those uh, that patina a lot nicer and look a lot better than the stone wash. Look a lot more, uh, look a lot more colourful, I guess. And it also lets me brush the hardware for a nice little two tone that matches the blade, because the inside of the hardware here is actually blasted. It's kind of hard to tell, but it is blasted. Focus, come on. And for some reason, there's a weird shadow, which I didn't know where that's coming from, but we have a shadow. And the camera's not going to pick it up. You can see how the cannonball is a little bit big. Inside the cannonball, I figured out a way to heat color it. So you've got this nice little ring of color. It's a little faint, and I couldn't really get it as vibrant as I wanted to. But it's it's in there. It's just a nice little touch. And uh, G10 backspacer with some jimping there just to break it a little, up a little bit so it's not so monotonous. Nice and smooth, still needs an edge. And I've got a whole load of these to do, just for uh, Urban EDC supply. I've been waiting on parts for that for a really long time. It's getting a little bit stressful, so uh, we'll see. Hopefully they're gonna come next week, hopefully. I've been told that they will be. I've been told that same thing multiple times, but we'll see, we'll see. Actually, let's have a look at this one here, while it's out. Uh, mate, I know you watch my channel, so here you go. Haven't forgotten about your knife. I know you've been, 
you're not even asking about it, still working on it. Uh, it's uh, This is a knife that I've been working on that's a little bit overdue. Uh, it's had all sorts of issues with it, just because of the big recurve here. I managed to burn out the shit out of this edge. So, uh, yeah, that wasn't great. I had to get this thing reheat treated. But it's almost done. But what I'm thinking about doing is I want to uh, add some micarta on the handles. Because it's going to be a pretty thin grip with just the paracord. So what the micarta should hopefully do is space that a little bit. Uh, I'm worried it might be a little bit blocky, but we'll see. I'll, I'll give that a go. Just to, you know, make it a nice handle for you. I also uh, threw in a convex. I, first time ever doing a convex. So this whole thing, or a full convex, sorry. So this whole thing has got this really nice convex. So it should be a little bit stronger. Nicer cutting performance. For, for this sort of knife anyway. But anyway, yeah, that's that. That's pretty much the lot, I think. Yep, no more knives. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching, guys. And I'm going to have another video, hopefully Friday. I've got two more of these I want to do. Because I have some more blades. And I'm not going to have any more blades until uh, at least Monday next week. So I want to get these two done by Friday. I'm thinking probably grey on one of them and black on the other. I'm going to try some something really cool with the blades. I've got an idea to make them look just mental. Maybe that'll be up Friday. If, it does, if it's not up Friday, I've either gotten distracted or my parts have arrived. Or we'll see. So yeah, we don't need the sheet on the camera. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.